The condition has several names, broken heart syndrome, stress heart syndrome, stress cardiomyopathy, but its classic medical name is Takasubu cardiomyopathy. And Takasubu turns out to be a special octopus fishing pot that's used in Japan. And this pot has quite a narrow neck and a wide base. So the octopus can come in through this narrow neck and then it gets trapped in this wide base. That appearance is classically what we see in the main pumping chamber of the heart in people with broken heart syndrome or Takasubu cardiomyopathy. Normally the whole heart will squeeze down. And in this condition, only the base of the heart where the blood is sort of entering and leaving is contracting normally and the whole apex of the heart just rather than squeezing in as it should, it balloons out like this Takasubu pot. There are three or four classic triggers of this stressful events and they may be psychological stress such as a major argument or death of a loved one or physical stress such as a major medical condition cancer, infection. I've even seen heart attack secondarily cause a broken heart syndrome due to the physical and mental stress of that. About 80% of people with broken heart syndrome are female, being over the age of 50, and also underlying mental health disorders such as depression and anxiety. These are all known risk factors for broken heart syndrome. The ways we diagnose it are by imaging and looking for that classical appearance of the ballooning of the heart, that Takasubu pot, and then we'll go on to do an angiogram, which is the way we check the arteries of the heart. So in a heart attack, what happens is there's a acute blockages of one of the arteries of the heart that causes a death of heart muscle. In this broken heart syndrome, there is no blockage. So we see that the arteries are open without any major problem. A lot of studies are going on trying to understand the mechanism, the biology of this. By understanding the biology, we'll be able to get to specific cures and treatments and blocking specific stress pathways. A lot of research is going on about how to best treat it acutely. So in hospital, are those therapies that we use to treat heart attack, are they the right ones for this condition? Can we do better? And then how to avoid recurrence and help people recover well, reducing stress, cognitive behavioural therapy, exercise, you know, what's the role of alcohol and things like that, all needs to be worked out. So those three big areas, the cause, in-hospital treatment and recovery are really where the focus is in research.